Hey guys, welcome to the In the Game Room podcast. This is Alan here coming to you from Adepticon 2018 in Chicago. In this quick little video, I'm going to have a sit down with my friend Rob right after we played Bolt Action. And this was his very first time playing Bolt Action, so we'll get his reactions to what he thinks of the game. So here we go. Hi guys, Alan here at, uh, where am I, Adepticon. And this is Rob. And Hi. We just uh, played Bolt Action, your first time, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so two or three years ago at Little Wars, you played TAC-2 with me, mm -hmm. and I taught you how to play, taught you how to beat me in that. <laughs> so today I taught him how to beat me in Bolt Action. So Very I, graciously. Yeah, well, you know. So what I want to find out is first reactions. What do you think of the game? A lot of fun, a lot of fun, bloody. <laughs> Very bloody. It's very bloody. But yeah, it's fast moving, <coughs> and uh, yeah, and just uh, there's just somebody gets killed every turn. Somebody gets killed every turn, and as you said, uh, even if you don't kill somebody, if you hit them, those pins add up. Yeah, you got you got pinned a lot. I yeah. didn't get pinned so much, but I got killed a lot. So, <laughs> but in the end, it's all the same, mm -hmm. I guess. But it makes for some kind of neat, uh, if you think cinematically, like the right. times when my guys were trying to run from the one ruin to the other and failed both they times. Just kept, they just I kept picture them like starting to run out uh -huh. and then a hail of fire. Like, mm, maybe uh -huh. not. <laughs> we'll just stay in here instead. It's hilarious. <laughs> well, not hilarious. It's interesting that you use the word cinematic because that's kind of how lately I've been describing the game. Mm -hmm. It's not a historical game, really. Right. It's not a technical game. It's very cinematic. Mm -hmm. it's like you could almost name the guys and <laughs> give, them, give them personalities yes. if you want. It, it just kind of plays that way. And I think there's, a, there's a, a dichotomy in the hobby. You know, there's some people who turn their nose up at Flames of War, for instance, right. because they think, oh, this is too, it's too cinematic. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. well, it's like, we don't all want to play Advanced Squad Leader. <laughs> we, you know, I don't want to do trigonometry. I don't want to try it ASL. It's right, just too right, hard. Yeah. And there's, there's something to be said for both, I think. I mean, like, when we played TAC 2, Every single vehicle had its own speed, mm -hmm. had its own armor ratings on the front, yes. the side, the oblique, the top. Mm -hmm. They had different rounds of ammunition, mm -hmm. you know, different ranges, and it gets very technical. And that's fun, but this is a different kind of fun, I think. And it's, it is. And it's, it's a nice break yeah. for me for playing the same game that I've been playing for 30-something years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to just play something where you can almost just sort of turn your brain off and just mm -hmm. enjoy it. Only recently, the last few years, that I hear the phrase uh, beer and pretzels. Right. And I'm not, I don't know that I necessarily consider this beer and pretzels. I think this is kind of transitional yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, I don't know what, you know. Um, I don't know what technically the definition yeah. of a beer and pretzels game is, but I've drank a beer while playing Bolt Action. So there you go. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So, and uh, so who won? Well, uh, the bad guys, my, my, my German Fallschirmjägers won. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Nobody can. So yeah. It <laughs> but yeah it was so, but it came, it came down literally to the last turn, the last, the last roll. The last couple of guys. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can picture uh, uh, this battle failed. So what, I had three guys left in one and one or two in the other? Probably, yeah. When I was down to, I was down to the last man on yeah. my two-man MMG team. And you can... You know, you can picture what it would be like if it was, even even if just the game itself was uh, like stop motion filmed or something. How quick, you know, big puff of smoke and everybody's gone. Exactly. Yeah, I took a couple of pictures during the game. I'll probably splice them into this video so people can see what the board looked like. They they weren't my uh, buildings, not my scenery, but they were pretty cool. I got to give them that. Yeah. It was kind of fun. Some of the buildings were kind of weird in that they didn't have windows on on some walls where it looked like which, they should have. But, but tactically then it came into play. It did come into play because it know. made you choose which buildings yeah. to go into and which ones were kind of a waste of time. Because the one, my one unit on the second from the right got chopped pretty quickly. So I ran them into that building even though there wasn't anything, there were no front facing windows, it, at least they were gonna be safe for a little bit of time. And so that, that comes into play. What I thought was the coolest building was on my side of the table, <laughs> it was kind of over here. It was the, uh, ruined building mm -hmm. but the walls were about half height yes got all my guys in there and they got their guns over the wall and then i realized 
Well, they can't fucking do anything. <laughs> there's no, there's, <laughs> there's nobody. No, nothing to shoot at. No so. line of sight or Brian range. Yeah, so what I thought was the best piece of cover, I had to just leave at some point yeah. and go on. Those were nice pieces. I mean, I know I, I have some by that company, and uh, um, I usually, <laughs> it's silly, but I usually feel, well, if I'm paying, I want the whole building. <laughs> I know that attitude. I bought some of your ruined ones, but I'm sort of like, I want all of the press board. That right, I, right. Know. Yeah. But no, it was it was visually and uh, and uh, tactically pleasing. I like the fact that it, it moves quickly, and well, I worry about what I'm like showing somebody for the first time how to play. Not like I'm kind of any kind of expert or anything, but I worry that the game will like keep their attention and keep them engaged, oh. you know. And this does; it just moves yeah. and moves and moves. And the whole order dice is uh, ingenious and can be really uh, can really bedevil you. It's, it's uh, like it's like I gotta get. Oh my god, I need to be first, and oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, you know, and it, we, we kind of went back and forth. We did. There was there was a time where you pulled like four or five in a, in a row, yeah. and then I'm sitting there going, "Do I get to play?" And then mm -hmm. it switches around, mm -hmm. so it's all good. Mm -hmm. So okay, well, we had a good time. And, yes. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get a few more games in. I think this kid's going home at some point. Pretty soon, yeah. And I I was like to point out that. Uh, as long as I'm around, there'll never be a wargaming convention without a fat guy in a Hawaiian shirt. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep the tradition alive. <laughs> Represent. Yes. Right on. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Thanks.